over the history of cinema, we've seen some of the best car chases. The worst. I'm going to compare the best ever to the worst ever. And tell you why one works and one Let's start with the French Connection. This 1971 classic is a remarkable film. It features the incredible Gene Hackman as a morally and politically incorrect detective. Popeye Doyle. Who will stop at nothing to bring down a criminal syndicate in New York. The unique thing about this sequence is that it's not strictly a car chase, it's actually a car and train chase. The scene consistently uses a car's POV to bring you into the action. Close-ups of the acceleration being pressed down and reaction shots of Gene Hackman. Nowadays, a shot like this would be easy. Back in 1971, director William Friedkin didn't have the luxury of CGI nor high-tech technology. The cameras were clunky and huge. So this shot is even more remarkable. And has there ever been a more scary or visceral moment in a car chase than this? An incredible scene in a truly brilliant film. The French Connection changed crime films forever and won five Academy Awards in the process. Now, Spectre. The 2015 James Bond film directed by Sam Mendes. Spectre as a film has numerous issues, the main issue being it's very boring, but this car chase has a few problems of its own. One being that it's boring. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. But why is it boring? Well, firstly, there are so many pointless cuts. We cut to the expressionist James Bond continuously. Also, this scene plays like a comedy scene and... No! It's not funny. Now, compare Doyle to James Bond. Chalk and cheese. One is adding to the franticness and the tension, the other barely looks in danger. Now granted, James Bond is not meant to look in danger, he's a cool collected customer, but for this scene in particular, it really takes away from any sense of tension or anticipation. Sam Mendes and comedy are not the best combination at the best of times, but here more so during a car chase. It brings what already is a low-key chase to a grinding halt. And criminally, it ends like this. For me, the sequence suffers because of the lack of intensity and stakes. There are no people walking on the street, no other cards on the road, no sense of danger, and unlike much of Mendes' other work, there seems to be a lack of cohesive shot structure in the filmmaking, making me believe that this may have been shot by a second unit team. Now, what makes this sequence even worse is that in the same year we had this. Good evening. Since the 
2000s, there's been this over-reliance on CGI, and car chases seem to have suffered the worst. The original Fast and the Furious film, which came out in 2001, has relatively grounded car chases. Whilst not the best car chases ever, the action is believable and again visceral. And it abides by the laws of physics. Now this is a car chase from F9 which was released in 2021. <laughs> what we have is this. A CG warplane carrying a CG car, CG helicopters, CG environment, CG rockets, followed by one of the stupidest moments in cinema history. No, 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 no. Look out for that CG wire, CG car, CG environment, and the biggest culprit here is a complete lack of care for the law of physics. Yet yeah, that is not possible. This scene from The Matrix Reloaded, which is a pretty average film all in all. Has some of the best action sequences of the trilogy. And it contains, for me, the best car chase sequence of all time. Now there was such dedication to getting this scene right, that in addition to using the studio, they also had a 1.5 mile freeway constructed at the decommissioned Naval Air Station in Almeida, California, specifically just for the film. It took seven weeks to shoot this sequence and was pre-planned for a year. I was, there was like this group of all these young guys who were doing kung fu and wire work. And then in the back of the room, there were these old cowboys. And these guys were just like still, big belt buckles, Levi's, you know, looking like they're from the 50s hard boys. And I was like, who's that? Excuse me. And they're like, those are the drivers. And I'm like, ooh. Now there was CGI in this sequence, but it was shot in 2001. So it was used to complement the scene and not create the scene, which always works better. And look, it pays off on screen. It is a 14 minutes white knuckle experience that keeps raising the stakes until we get this incredible ending. Now, creating a car chase sequence is no easy feat whatsoever, believe me. With film and CGI consistently changing, you have to keep on top of the game. Things like stuntmen safety, crew safety, car safety, and timekeeping need to be considered while shooting a car chase sequence. Which is why a lot more films nowadays are using CGI as opposed to real-time practical effects to create sequences. Not many directors in the world right now could demand to make a 1.5 mile constructed highway to shoot a car chase sequence that takes seven weeks. Most films or TV shows are now shot within four to eight weeks. Seven weeks to shoot just one 14 minute sequence in a two hour film is unheard of in modern film. But as you can see, it really pays off. And that's why nowadays we get chase sequences like Inspector and F9. It's fast food filmmaking, churning out the processed meat for public consumption as soon as possible. The key word here is visceral. Whether it's combat or car chases, it needs to feel visceral.
haven't subscribed yet, please do hit the sub button. Also hit the notification button so you can be notified when I post a new video. Also hit the like button, it really helps with the algorithm and helps the channel grow, which is also very amazing and wonderful. If you do want to join and be a member of the channel, there's now an option to do that on my community page and on my page in general, you can hit on the join button. Uh, there's loads of lovely benefits for you. You get a little badge, you also get exclusive content eventually when I make some. And thank you so much if you subscribed already and you've been following and commenting and I've had some amazing conversation with some amazing people as well. Thank you for the super chat, all those people who give me super chats so far. I've had some really lovely comments and some really amazing conversations with some really amazing people. And I want to keep that going. I want us to grow and grow and grow. And I don't want to be in a position where I can't reply to everyone's comments. So I will try, no matter how many subscribers we get over the next year or so, to try and respond to every person's comment. If, it, if you have any questions about filmmaking, if you have any questions about the channel, do let me know in the comments. I will reply to it. Also, Tommaso, thank you so much for showing me your short film. It was really good. I really enjoyed it. You've got a lot of potential to so keep doing your thing. It's not easy out there. Believe me, I've made five feature films and none of them have been easy to shoot. But as long as you keep doing what you want to do, it doesn't matter. Listen, it's amazing talking to you guys. Uh, there's some videos over here. And until we speak again, big love.